Welcome back everybody to part four on our series with the TD Ameritrade WebSocket API. So this is the basically the API that allows us to stream data. In the last video, we basically got our request set up to go and log ourselves in. And then we're gonna basically subscribe to a couple uh, streams that we will then have sent back to us. So in this video, we're gonna build the WebSocket client. The WebSocket client is really the mechanism where we're gonna be sending and receiving requests. And then if we're gonna be doing anything with those requests, so for example, inserting it into a database, for example, uh, we would also define that in this new client object. So we might be learning a couple new things in this video. Uh, this is a little bit new for me, but uh, I think I got pretty much what we need in order to do it but we're gonna be having to use a couple new libraries. And by default, they are not gonna be installed on your system. So you will need to make sure that you install them. I will be leaving some documentation behind about what those commands are. It's, you know, pretty typical stuff like pip install websockets and things like that. So nothing super crazy. Um, again, I will be providing that in the documentation, but let's get started. Alrighty, we're gonna import some more libraries because why not? First one will be WebSockets. This is gonna be one of the libraries that you probably will not have um, by default. So we can do pip install WebSockets. And if you go here, it is gonna be the first one. It's literally pip install WebSockets. So pretty simple stuff. And then the next one is gonna be called asyncio. I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. Yeah. And then this one is another one. This is where we can make asynchronous requests and I'll explain what that is in a second. Uh, this one, again, pretty straightforward. There is probably one more additional one, but I will get to that when we get to that part of the video. And then we're gonna also import our PI ODBC library. This is the component where we're gonna be taking our data and inserting it into a database. I have a bunch of videos on how to use the PI ODBC library, so I'll put links to that down below as well. But this will be a nice, easy way of saying, hey, I've got all this data, what do I do with it? You can write it to a text file or you can just take the time in the beginning, parse it, get it all cleaned up, and then just directly insert it into a database. That's personally what I would do. Okay, from here, we're gonna define a new class object. So basically this is gonna be an object where we can call different methods and properties about it. We're gonna call it WebSocket Client. And then from here, we're gonna define the initialization uh, dunder method. And so from here, it will be double underscore init, and then it will take the object itself. And from here, what we're gonna do is, uh, we'll do the connection, okay. So we'll say self.connection, so this will be our connection to the database. At this point, we'll equal none. And then we're gonna have a cursor object, which will allow us to interact with that particular database. And then this is gonna be things like, um, or, or things along that nature. So things like, you know, I wanna send information to a table, I wanna execute queries and things along that nature. This will be done with the cursor object. And so we're just gonna find two of those components. One is a connection and one is a cursor. We will be assigning a value to these wonderful little uh, properties down below. Okay, so let's define a new method. We'll call it database underscore connect. The database connect will just take again the object itself because I want to be able to access this method outside the object. And there's a couple different things that we need to find about our particular database. And I already have that information here. So I'm just gonna copy it and then just explain what it is. So one is obviously the server. So where does this data live and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, you know, where does that database live? It lives on a server, this is mine. And then the name of the database and then the driver. So you do need a driver in order to use this. If you have SQL installed, you shouldn't have a problem with it. Um, you know, you would just take the ODBC driver 17 for SQL server. Obviously it could change depending on the version of your particular database. So you, you just gotta keep that in mind. There's not a 100% guarantee that you're on an earlier version or something like that where it's gonna work. So from here, we need to define our connection to the database. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say set that self.connection equal to pi ODBC. We're gonna call the connect method. 
I'm going to define a couple keyword arguments. One is going to be the SQL driver. So this is basically your connection string. I learned this a little bit ago. You don't actually have to pass through an entire string. You can actually just provide keyword arguments. One is the server. Uh, one is the database. And then if you want to use your Windows authentication, like I do, I just do trusted connection is equal to yes, just like that. So a couple different ones. I'll kind of indent it just so you guys can see it. So you've got your driver, your server, your database, and I want to use Windows authentication. So I'm going to use trusted connection equals yes. All righty. And then from here, I'm going to say self.cursor. So the cursor object is the mechanism we use in order to interact with the database. Well, we're going to take our connection object, and then we're going to call the cursor object on it, and that will return the cursor back to us. So we've defined a mechanism to connect to our database. We need a mechanism to insert data into our database. So we'll say database underscore insert. It will take self, query, and then a data tuple. And then from here, all we're going to do is we're going to take our cursor. We're going to say execute. So we're going to execute a query. And that we're going to pass through a query and then the data tuple that we want to insert. Again, it'll make more sense when we get to that point. The next one is we want to commit that insertion. So we're going to say connection.commit. And then I do want to close my connection. So I say connection.close. Now, you probably could do this all fancier and stuff like that, but at this point, we'll just keep it simple. There might be some more efficient ways to do it and, and things like that, but to be honest, I haven't had time to look too much into it. Okay, so data has been successfully inserted into the database. This is just for me to make sure that it's working because you'll find the errors don't necessarily pop up as easy as they define. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're going to get into kind of the fun components. So... <clears throat> The first one is we're going to now, instead of defining regular uh, functions, we're going to be defining async functions. So what's so special about an async function? Basically, um, with the async function, you can basically have multiple things happen at once, and that can be advantageous or that can be not advantageous. It really depends the situation at hand. And so really what we're saying with the async function is, hey, with these particular ones, we could be sending multiple requests at once, and I don't necessarily have to wait for a response to come back in order to move on to the next component. And so that's when we say it's asynchronous because um, it's all not happening in sequence. So all it really means is we're just going to add a new keyword in front of it. So it's just async uh, define, and then it's just the name of the function. Again, this is going to take the object itself. <clears throat> And really here, this is where we're going to connect to our uh, WebSocket. So we're going to define a URI, which is going to equal WSS colon forward slash forward slash. And then it's going to be this wonderful thing here. And so streamer info. And it's going to be the streamer socket URL and then it's going to be plus forward slash WS and that's it. So this is your web socket URL. So this is basically kind of like your endpoint. And then we're going to say self dot connection equals a wait. So we want to wait, we want to wait for it to connect before moving on to the next component. So web sockets client connect URI. So that's kind of the problem with the asynchronous. If we don't use await, it could move on to the next line before it actually finishes connecting. So if it doesn't actually connect before moving to the next one, then all these other commands are going to be running and they're going to come back saying, oh, it didn't work. It didn't work because you never actually waited to turn. Basically, you, didn't, you never waited for that connection to actually get established. So that's where we're defining these asynchronous behavior, but we're really turning it into synchronous behavior because we're saying, hey, wait for something to happen before moving on to the next one. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll say if self.connection.open, so hey, if we have an open connection, 
then what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, print connection established. Client correctly connected. I had to do a lot of research last night on Stack Overflow, to say the least. And then if that is the case, then return self dot connection. So this is where we connect to our WebSocket. If everything goes great, return that connection back to us. Okay, what next? So now we need to have a mechanism where we can send some messages. So we'll create a new method called send message that will take the object itself and then a message. We'll find that the message is just simply the request. And so all we're going to do is we're going to say await self.connection dot send message. So again, we're using the await command that says, hey, wait, wait until you send that message. Okay, so we now have a mechanism to send the messages. We now need to move to the second point, which is receive the message. So wait to finish to send the message. And then what we can do next is receive message. And uh, that's again going to take that and then another message. Or, sorry, no, the connection. The connection itself. Okay. Okay, so this is going to be receiving the message from the server, and this is where we're going to be handling them. So, this is things like, okay, I got my data back. What do I want to do? So, while we're still receiving messages, so while true, what we're going to do is we're going to try to receive that message. We're going to do some different types of things to it. So we'll parse it and stuff like that. But we're going to have to wrap this all in a try accept statement. So in this scenario where we don't receive anything back or, you know, we're getting errors, we want to be able to say, hey, maybe the connection's closed or something like that. So we're going to wrap this in a try and accept statement. So we'll say try and then we'll say accept uh, da, 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 web sockets dot exceptions dot connection closed. Whew. Okay, and then what we'll say is, hey, print connection with server closed, and then break. So we'll exit that while loop. Okay, but let's say it's successful. What do we want to do then? Well, first, want to make sure we get a message back. So we'll call the connection receive method. We're going to be getting some JSON data back. So we're going to have to load that and parse it. And so we'll say message decoded equals JSON.loads. And then it's the message that we receive back. So this is just simply taking it. Uh, basically, we're grabbing, grab and decode the message. Okay, so from here, now we need to go to the fun part, which is inserting the data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that up and running, and then I'm going to grab some stuff here. Okay. Just to, again, save some time typing. <clears throat> and then I'm going to explain where I'm inserting this data. Uh, no, I didn't want to do that. Okay, so this is just returning. This is me testing it, making sure it all works because, you know, you should test things, right? <laughs> okay, so all we're going to be doing is we're going to be defining a query where we're going to be passing through some values uh, into our table. So I've already created a table. It's a really simple one. It's simply the service name, the timestamp, and the command. So nothing fancy in upcoming videos, probably down the load. Sorry, down the road. I will be going into more complex stuff where we can build relationships and things like that, just so that way, if people want to see that, you can kind of go through that. But at this point, I'm just taking my data and I'm going to define a query where I insert it into my database. I then connect to my database. So this is where I'm calling that method up here. And then from here, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, if that request has a key called data in it, then you can go on the next one. Again, this will make more sense when you actually see what the data looks like. 
But at this point for handling it, we only want to handle the ones that actually have a key in it called data. Because if they have that key in it, that means it has the information we want to insert in the database. You'll notice you'll get other messages back. It might be like a heartbeat, which is just saying, hey, I'm still connected to the server. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the data and we'll call data equals message decoded data. And then it's usually just the first one. Most of them only return one back. Again, it changes, obviously, depending on what you're doing. So you're going to have to know what you're necessarily getting back. I'm going to create a tuple and I'm going to say data uh, service and then data time stamp data command. Perfect. And then we'll insert it into the database. So insert the data. And so what we'll do is we'll say <clears throat> um, self.database insert. We'll pass through the query and then the data tuple. So this guy right here and then the data itself. And then all goes well. I want you guys to be able to see the data. And so what we'll say is, hey, we're going to line break because we'll be getting a lot back. And then we'll say, ah, received message from server. And then it will be string message. Perfect. OK, we're almost there. <laughs> and then we can. Uh, finish this video. Alrighty. So we need to find one last method. Again, it's going to be another async one. And we'll say heartbeat. With this one, this is just checking to make sure we're still connected to the database. That's all. So this is just a mechanism for us to say, hey, we're still connected, right? The connection's still alive, right? <laughs> Because if not, then we want to let the user know, hey, the connection's no longer there. So it's going to take the connection object itself and then the object. And we'll say while true, uh, try await connection dot send. We're going to send a ping. And then await. And then we'll call our async. I think that's how you spell it. Sleep. Five seconds. And then... If again, anything happens, make sure to let the user know. That's really all we're doing. So all this is going to say is, hey, something went wrong and, um, you know, your connection was lost. So with that being said, I think I've confused enough people uh, for the moment. So if you have any questions about what we covered, so building the WebSocket client, please put them down in the comments below uh, and I'll try to get back to you. In our next video, we are going to be sending our request and receiving our data and then watching it go into our database. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, and then at that point, that really does it for this particular uh, point in the series. I will be coming out with more videos where we explain how to use certain endpoints, but this is really the one that just was allowing us to get up and running because if you can't connect and you can't send requests, you know, you're going to have a whole heck of a time. Uh, once we get to this point, then we can start exploring the other uh, endpoints and stuff like that. So again, if you have any questions, please put them down in the comments below and we will see you in video five.